Well, brothers and sisters in Christ, today we see Jesus in all his glory. Today we see Jesus as his godness is breaking forth from his humanness. We see that great power that is always churning underneath the surface in the Christ break forth out of that. So in the flesh that Christ is, in that limited flesh, we see the unlimited God break through the cracks. And when people experienced that, when they experienced it back there 2,000 years ago, when they saw the glory of God and all of its wonder and majesty and might, they could not help but fall on their knees and raise up their arms and cry out praises and hosanna to God. Because if they did not, the stones themselves would do it. Because that's what happens when the glory the glory of God is revealed. That's what happens when we see God in all of his wonder and amazement. We have to praise. We have to feel that deep sense of awe that just bubbles forth and bursts into kneeling and praising and shouting and praying. You have to. And we see this in other times in the gospel, the Christmas story, the baby Jesus lying in the manger. The three wise men came up and he's a baby. He's a tiny little infant. He's not doing anything but gurgling around. But they see in this baby, this infant, the power of God, and they can't not fall on their knees and raise up their arms and praise him. And you see it in the shepherds who haven't even met the Christ yet. Miles away, they hear the announcement of him and they just can't help because of the, the amazing wonder of God to fall on their knees and raise up their arms and praise. That's what happens. You see it in the Mount of Transfiguration when none less than Moses and Elijah lift Jesus up. The disciples are there and they are so beside themselves with awe, so beside themselves in the wonder of the moment that they become incapable of coherent thought. They start babbling their praise. They start babbling their wonder wonder and amazement. You even see it in the Garden of Gethsemane as Jesus is surrounded by soldiers who want to grab onto him and drag him off to arrest and betrayal and trial and death. And he says three words, I am he. And if those words are spoken, the whole Roman legion goes flying back on their butts. That's the power you see sometimes in the Christ and you see it again today. As Jesus enters into Jerusalem, people are ripping off their coats and their cloaks and they're ripping tree limbs off and they're throwing him on his feet and they're shouting these hosannas and this praise and this glory because if they do not then the stones underneath them will have to do it for them because that's what happens and we see it ourselves we still experience this today these moments when you're out in God's glory and God's creation and you're surrounded by people you love and there's a cool breeze coming in from the lake and you can hear the leaves rattling above you and there's barbecue grilling and you can smell it and you just know that the world is good and God is on the throne and the place that he has given you, this creation, this beautiful earth is good and you just can't not just fall on your knees and lift up your arms and shout out your praise. Or those moments, we've all had them, I hope, when you're lying back on a perfect summer night and you can see the stars and they're so bright they illuminate the darkness and you get that sense of just how big God is, how huge he is, and how small you are, and that sense of awe that fills your heart, and you can't not but just fall on your knees and lift up your arms and praise, or those times when you come into worship, and you got the organ going, and you got horns, and you got this music swelling up, and you just know God is here around us, in us, within us, talking to us, guiding us, leading us, and you can't not fall on your knees and lift up your arms and praise. You can't not. And this is what we see today as well, this time when you just see the glory of God. And if we don't do it, if we don't get down on our knees and raise up our arms and praise, then the very stones underneath our feet will do it. And it's not their job. It's our job. It's what we're called to do. And today we see Jesus in all his glory. And today we do it with all the disciples throughout all time forever. So Jesus comes in, and it's this great moment of triumph. It's this great moment of celebration. Jesus in all his glory, and he walks down the Mount of Olives, people cheering and yelling all around this great praise. And we didn't read this part of the gospel, but the next line is he stops in the Mount of Olives looking at Jerusalem, and he weeps. Jesus, in this great triumphant entry, he stops and he cries. He cries because he sees Jerusalem, and even though people are calling for peace, he knows of our warring madness. He knows of our inability to make peace with one another. 
He looks at Jerusalem, which up to that point, it had this history of war and violence and one conqueror after another, and he knows the future history that goes up until today of war and violence in that city, and he weeps. This is the great tension in our God, the contrast. That's so hard for us to wrap our minds around, but if we can, we really get into the character of who God is, that mighty, triumphant, glorious God who cries, that conquering hero who suffers, that almighty creator who loves, the idea of, of Jesus who is the all-powerful king of the universe who's turning his face towards Jerusalem to go and die for his people. That's the God we worship this morning. And as Jesus turns his face to Jerusalem, so do we. This next week is Holy Week. It is the holiest of all weeks. It is kind of a week of worship. We, we gather again and again to remember the stories, remember what God has done for us. We gather on Thursday to remember Jesus uh, washing his disciples' feet, telling us how much he loves us, eating this meal together, and then the betrayal. We gather on Friday to remember the day when the world grieved, when all of the universe wept, when the sun refused to shine for three hours in the afternoon. We gather on Saturday to hold our breath together, to dare to hope that the promise is true. And then, of course, Sunday, the day of sweet victory. But we're not there yet. Today is still Palm Sunday. Today, we shout our hosannas. We shout our praise. We, we lift up our hands. We fall down on our knees. We cry out all of the wonders that God has done. We worship that, that God and Jesus Christ, the Lord who weeps. Amen.